Hi, welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm Joe Alvarez. Okay, one other thing I want to bring up is our saws and what I like or what I recommend. What I recommend is using our rotary saw. The reason why is you don't have to worry about losing the blade. The saw also guides itself down for you. When I take this saw and I put it on my roof, it sits flat on the deck with its feet. I'm going to take the saw and I'm going to run the RPMs up. And this should be something that you should hear. You should not be grabbing this trigger and depressing it as hard as you can. It's a plastic trigger with a very small rod that's holding onto it. You should be practicing this saw and you should be running through it and knowing what the RPMs sound like in your head. It should all be by ear. Now I'm going to show you something about another saw that I've seen used a lot in the fire grounds, which I'm not a friend of. I'm not taking away from the saw. It does do its job. But if you are not familiar with the roof, now yes, this is a typical homeowner's chainsaw. The fire service has purchased more heavier duty saws. They've gotten um, other type saws with bullet blades that are actually more fire service friendly. The only thing you have to remember is the RPMs that are generated from this saw are greater than any bar chainsaw that you would have. That's number one. Number two, every time I've ever seen an individual cut with this saw, they'll take and they'll lean off their ladder and they'll end up holding the saw like this. And I'm sure a couple of you are going to be chuckling at home. The reason why is I guarantee you've seen this. They'll put the saw in at an angle. And then what happens is as you're going to make their cut, the bar starts to flex. And then eventually, you can throw the chain. You have to remember, it's a gear with a chain on it. This chain is the weak link. It's made to fail. So as you go and torque this, you snap your chain. You better make sure you have some tools with you because, again, conventional methods are going to have to come into play. With our rotary saw, getting back to this if I may, as it's running into the roof, if an individual is not that properly trained with this and they start to bind it down, what will happen is you'll hear the belt, it'll start to squeal and smoke, and then that will be your sign to stop what you're cutting. So I just went over those two functions of these saws. What I want to bring up though, when I said about putting the feet down and running the saw in, with this, when we do a curve cut or an inspection cut, it's very simple with this saw, and when guys cut, they'll do that. They put the saw on its feet, and they'll bury the blade, and the blade will go all the way down through into the decking. That's a 12-inch cut. When I come over here, and I want to do my inspection cut, I don't want to run the saw into my cut. So what I'm going to do is I sit it on its feet, I make the first cut, bring it around, put it on its feet. I'm only dropping it the width of the blade each time. I'm not running the saw down the roof. I'm just dropping it in, OK? And as I drop it in, it makes my little inspection hole. When we cut, as I said before, saw goes down, we put it in the roof, and we walk it. I've not seen too many firefighters take this bar, put it down, push in, and then walk it. They're always taking this saw and doing a plunge cut, which is pretty dangerous because that will cause the saw to kick back if you hit something. Um, depending on veteran or junior guys, like I said earlier, you have to be careful because when you bury this, that's the depth you're going to get. One more thing that's very important is the individual that's watching the cutter, the spotter, whatever you want to call that individual. While the, while the cutter is making our cuts, we want to keep in contact with that individual at all times, hand on. If the hand is on, we're ready to cut. Once my hand comes off, cutting should stop immediately, OK? That could have been I either lost my footing and fell backwards, I fell off the edge of the roof. A chief officer, no pun, the chief officer might want my attention. So if I turn and I look at a chief officer and I'm not looking at my individual cutting the roof, then I'm not paying attention to his or her cuts. So once I turn my body, I'm no longer in contact. I'm answering my boss 
And what happens? No more visual contact. I'm not watching him. I'm not really a spotter to him or her anymore. So it's hand on, we're ready to cut. Hand off, cutting stops. I hope everybody got a little bit out of this. It's just little techniques that I picked up. It's not saying that this is the way you have to do things. It's just another method. Thank you for watching Training Minutes. I'm Joe Alvarez.